Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to talk about the excretory system. Excretion. Excretion means to remove something. In organisms, when we are dealing with the living organisms, then excretion means removal of different materials from the body of organisms. As we know that organisms, the living organisms, always conduct, carry out the metabolism. They have to break down various things and they have to make various things. Metabolism is a combination of catabolism and anabolism. Anabolism is a process which is making of things. Whenever body need to make certain things, this process is called anabolism. In this process, energy is utilized. When body is performing some functions, energy is also utilized. This energy has to be produced. Body conduct or carry out catabolism to produce energy. As we know that the major molecule which is involved in production of energy is the glucose molecule. By the breakdown of glucose molecules, we produce, uh, the organisms produce energy for them. This is the major catabolism, the major catabolic pathways. But there are lot many other metabolic pathways which are always carried out inside the body. All of these catabolic pathways releases some byproducts, some extra products or we can say the waste products. These are those things, those metabolites we must say in a more uh, proper term, these are those metabolites or the end products of the metabolism which are not required by the body. And because catabolism is always, um, uh, it is always um, uh, in action, it is always carried out. So these products keep producing. And if they keep producing, they tend to be accumulated inside the body if they are not removed on time. This is very important that organisms get rid of these byproducts or waste products. Let us look at some major reactions that occur inside the body. Have a look on the slide. It shows that carbohydrates when react with oxygen produces carbon dioxide, water and energy. As we know that carbohydrates, proteins and lipids are three major food components of the food. The proteins when they react with oxygen, they are catabolized, they are broken down to carbon dioxide, water, ammonia and energy. Lipids, when they react with oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. Energy is useful for body. Body utilizes energy for its anabolic reactions and all the functions. But carbon dioxide, water and ammonia, as we observe, in all of the three reactions with carbohydrates, with the proteins or lipids, three things or three products, waste products are produced, carbon dioxide, water and ammonia. If these reactions goes on and these metabolic byproducts keep producing and they are not removed, they will be accumulated inside the body and their accumulation is not good or we, can, or we must say these are uh, dangerous or hazardous for the body. Rise in carbon dioxide may result in decrease in the pH of the body. Carbon dioxide, if it is increased in the body, it causes the decrease in pH, which means that the pH of the body will become more acidic if more carbon dioxide is produced in the blood. And this more acidic pH could be very dangerous for different organs and uh, uh, the vessels of the blood itself, uh, for the vessels of the blood itself. Um, water, if it is present in excess, um, this may give rise to various problems. For example, if water is, water normally as in the plasma is about 92% of the plasma. If its concentration increases, then it may result in removal of the fluid, uh, the water content, um, from the blood vessels towards different tissues which results in accumulation of water content in different tissue fluids of the body which is called dropsy which may lead towards you can say fluid retention in different parts of the body. Swelling. 
if the water content is decreased, decrease the normal, then this um, is called dehydration. This may also give rise to various problems. For example, um, decrease in blood pressure. If water content, because we know that there is a specific volume of the um, uh, blood inside the body and uh, the vessels, they are also um, uh, they are also in a specific number and their sizes are specific. So, if the volume of um, water decrease, then the volume of plasma will decrease inside the vessels and this will result in drop of blood pressure, which could result in um, serious problems. This has to be taken um, seriously and have to be corrected. Ammonia is highly toxic, very, very toxic for the body tissues. If the concentration of ammonia uh, goes high, then this is very risky for the tissues because it is toxic means this is poisonous for the tissues of the body. Body readily convert ammonia into urea, which is less toxic product, but even this less toxic product also has to be removed from the body. So, for removal of all of these um, ingredients, these waste products, excretory systems are required. As we know that carbon dioxide is um, also removed by the lungs during the exhalation process. During the inhalation and exhalation process, uh, the uh, respiration, organismic respiration, carbon dioxide is um, removed from the body. Um, ammonia is converted by the liver into urea, but then urea has to be removed. Particularly, the nitrogenous waste materials and water has to be removed by a system called excretory system. We talk about excretion in different vertebrate land animals as an example. As we know uh, that um, land animals, um, uh, the vertebrates um, are, are uh, in a huge diversity. There are a lot many types of vertebrates present on the earth in the biosphere. They are present on land, they are present in water, they are present in fresh water, they are present in uh, marine water, live on the trees, um, live in the deserts. So, the vertebrates are living in diverse environments and they are of diverse types. Let us look at the different waste products that the vertebrates produce. Carbon dioxide, mineral salts, urea, creatinine, uric acid, excess water, ammonia. So, the vertebrates produces a variety of waste products. To remove these waste products, different organs play their role. For example, carbon dioxide is um, removed by uh, respiration, the respiratory system. Um, water is uh, removed by sweating through skin, um, but the major role is played by an excretory system helped by a structure called kidney. Kidneys are the most important structures and they are the major contributors in excretory systems in vertebrates. Let us have a look on excretion generally in animal just briefly. There are organisms which are unicellular. There are small animals, there are large animals. In very small animals, um, the unicellular animals, because the body consists of just a single cell like an amoeba, this is very easy to exchange uh, their waste material um, or the other materials with the environment. Just through their plasma membrane, the cell membrane, these organisms exchange their um, materials with the environment they can remove their waste products outside. For example, the amoeba have um, to face the excess of water because it is living in a hypotonic environment in fresh water. Amoeba have a contractile vacuole inside which continuously removes water uh, from its body. Amoeba removes um, ammonia directly through the skin, through the uh, cell membrane uh, inside the water because it is living in the water. There are small animals which have uh, simpler structures. They can remove their uh, waste products directly in the uh, water. For example, hydra, a small organism, multicellular organism can easily 
um, remove its uh, waste products in the water coming in and going out through its gastrovascular cavity. It have a cavity inside the body in the center which is called a gastrovascular cavity um, and there is an opening of that cavity and water enters in and uh, fill that cavity and um, this organism can remove its waste products directly um, in the water that is because water is so close to the uh, cells that they can directly exchange their um, waste products or maybe other products like oxygen and um, other materials with that water and then water goes out. Um, in, in complex organisms like vertebrates, these mechanisms are uh, more and more complex um, and their habitats as we previously talked about are very diverse. There are adaptations to the habitat in the excretory systems. Vertebrates lives in water, in fresh water, in um, brackish water like for example marine water, uh, they lives in deserts, they live in terrestrial environment, even aerial. The birds live in air, they fly in air for uh, most of their time. Organisms live in uh, water, fresh water, the fish, the freshwater fish have to face with lots and lots of quantities of water. The organisms living in brackish water like marine water, the sea fish um, have to face a very high concentration of salts. The animals living in desert uh, because in desert there is a shortage of water, they always have a problem of um, water shortage that is they do not have uh, uh, good quantities of water for uh, drinking. The terrestrial animals in comparison are in a uh, balanced position. These organisms according to their uh, habitats and according to the availability of water and uh, uh, availability of um, other um, uh, foods and other things adapted different types of um, kidneys and related structures. For example, the desert animals they have uh, their kidneys with the uh, comparatively um, the, the, uh, say smaller nephrons in, in a way these are their kidneys are designed in a way that they produces um, a very concentrated uh, urinary or we can say um, excretory products mostly in the form of um, uh, crystals uh, which have minimum quantity of water. Uh, the uh, freshwater fish because they are exposed to larger quantities of water they um, have to excrete large quantities of um, water from their body, urine, water in the form of urine. So their kidneys are uh, adapted uh, accordingly uh, for removal of excess of water. Um, the marine fish on the other hand because they have to face brackish water, water with very high salt concentrations and uh, uh, very uh, and there is a reduced quantity of water in that uh, uh, say solution, we can say the brackish water solution, um, their uh, kidneys are designed in this way that they produce minimum urine. Just like the terrestrial animals, they have um, um, a very uh, adaptive and uh, we must say advanced form of kidney. Um, we will talk more about the human kidney which is the uh, most complicated and which is um, uh, designed according to the needs and the requirements um, of the human beings. Some other organs also act as uh, excretory organs. For example, skin, skin also act as an excretory structure. As we say that mineral salts and water um, are the common metabolic waste products and skin act as uh, excretory organ. It removes mineral salts and water, um, for example, um, in, uh, in summer. Uh, in the form of sweat. We experience sweat commonly uh, and the sweat actually consists of the mineral salts and uh, water. Um, so the skin also sometimes act as an excretory organ. Some organisms which are particularly living in very high salt environment have a, a specific organ called salt gland. This is a gland um, inside their head uh, behind, the, uh, behind or close the eyes which continuously remove the salts from their body. And um, in some birds, the salt goes out um, just like in the form of tears. Um, 
uh, people say that this bird cries. Actually, those birds have salt glands and they, they continuously excrete salt um, from their, uh, through their eyes and it goes out. So this is how they remove their excess salt with the help of a salt gland. This is a very specific adaptation of some birds which lives in uh, uh, very high um, uh, brackish water, which this, the water which have a very high concentration of salts. In some organisms, intestine also act as an excretory organ. Through intestine, water um, is uh, many times removed. Um, mostly, uh, intestine act as an um, excretory organ for uh, excess water. Uh, sometimes it may act for um, certain salts. Then comes the kidney. Kidney is the major organ which is uh, involved in uh, excretion in vertebrates. It also helps in osmoregulation because osmoregulation means the regulation of water inside the body. Because water is, uh, the water regulation is also extremely important uh, because uh, water potential is one of the most important um, uh, homeostatic uh, balances in the body.